Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Bunflow 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Currently, right now, as of August the 7th, this thing has got a $319.99 price tag with a $50 off coupon on Amazon, bringing it down to 269 bucks or 21 cents a watt hour. Now the good thing is it appears that a lot of these batteries are slowly starting to creep down in price. So at 21 cents a watt hour, I think that's a pretty good deal for any LiPo 4 battery if it works well. But we're gonna test that out on this battery. Now this is kind of your standard all day, every day, typical 12.8, LiPo 4 battery. You're gonna get 5,000 charge cycles to 80%. It's got a five year warranty. Again, 269 bucks, M8 terminal bolts. It weighs around 24 pounds. It's got all of your standard protection features, your over voltage, your temperature protection, your under voltage. This does not have low temp cutoff feature built into the BMS though. So if you live up north, this might not necessarily be for you. You can connect up to four of these in series for a 48 volt battery bank or up to 10 in parallel to create a pretty large 12.8 volt battery system. So these are configurable in different arrays depending on how many you wanna go buy if you wanna buy more than one of these. But let's get straight to testing and see how this thing does to see if that 21 cents a watt hour is just rubbish or if it's a pretty good deal. Well, nothing special here. I got my test rig set up to do a capacity discharge test off of this battery. So to begin, I've got around a 300-ish watt light bulb little fixture that we're gonna plug in here to this inverter and we're gonna run this battery down to completely empty. I did reset the shunt so everything is completely cleared out, ready to go for this new battery. And when we're done, I'll come back and show you the amount of amp hours that I was able to pull out of this battery. So let's get this inverter cut on. And here we go. So this light bulb array is pulling around 307 watts. So when we're done, I'll come back and show you that final number to make sure that that battery gets its full 100 amp hours. Okay guys, so 104.4 .4 amp hours out of that battery. And the crazy thing is, I probably could have squeezed about one or two more amp hours out of this battery, but I actually had a low voltage disconnect on my inverter, because this got to around 11.1 .1 volts when the inverter finally shut everything down. So I'm gonna go with 104 amp hours out of this battery, because that's what I can show you, but I, I'm pretty sure that I could have gotten at least 105, possibly even 106 amp hours out of this battery, but I do have the charger connected now. So when this thing gets topped off, we're gonna come back and do a max discharge test to see what we can actually pull out of this battery with an appliance. All right, so we got the battery completely topped off. I've got a couple of appliances over here hooked up to the inverter. So I'm gonna try to get around 100 amps because that's what this is rated for to run continuously. So I've got my little stopwatch here. I got my clamp meter hooked up. We're gonna cut on the inverter here and these incandescent bulbs are gonna cut on, and that's pulling 22, 23 amps. No big deal. Got a space heater here. Let's get this thing turned on all the way. And that's 140, 150 amps. Let's turn this thing down. 175 amps, 180 amps. So it can obviously handle a surge pretty well. I'm trying to kind of knock it down. Yep, so, okay, well, looks like anything around 170 amps and above for longer than around 10 seconds is gonna trip this BMS, which is a good thing. You don't wanna fry these batteries, but I've gotta cut this inverter off now and kind of reset everything and try to get a little closer to 100 amps for this test to make sure that it can run that continuously. I got the BMS reset on the battery. I just turned on my little space heater here and we're pulling 112 amps right now, 113 amps kind of fluctuating. That's as close to 100 amps as I can get it off of the space heater. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start and make sure that this battery can run this particular load for around 10 minutes. Now again, this is rated for more than what this battery is stated for at 100 amps continuous. So, so it will be a pretty good test on this battery to see if it can run 113 amps for 10 minutes, so we'll check back in after that.
Well, we're coming up on 10 minutes, about 30 more seconds, and this is still running at 112 amps, if you can make that number out right there. And there we go, 10 minutes, over 10 minutes, running 112 amps continuously. So that's pretty impressive for a battery at this price point. Now, I've already kind of showed you where the BMS cuts off, but let's try it again. I'm gonna click this heater on just a little bit higher and see how many amps we can get. And I'm gonna hold this clamp meter up so hopefully you can get a better, a better view of it while I turn this heater up. So we're at 112 amps right now. And let me plug in my, I guess that's as high as that heater's gonna go because the coils are hot. Let me plug in this light bulb array. And that's gonna put us to 142 amps, 141 amps. We're still going. We're still going and that is pulling 1,805 watts. So I'm gonna let this sit here and Again, remember this cut off at around 170, 171 amps when I had two heaters plugged up to it. So I think that's gonna be the cutoff, the max that you're gonna get for a brief period of time is a little over 170 amps. It's still running fine in 142 amps. My cables are nice and warm. Got some beeping. I don't think the battery's happy, but my cables are nice and warm. I don't like I would never run this, this much load off of this battery with these cables in real life, but to hopefully show you what this battery is capable of, it's a pretty good example. Well, we've been going now for around two minutes at 142 amps, and I think that's way more than you should ever run off of a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery at least to be on the safe side. So I'm going to get this stuff cut off. Let my cables cool down. I'm gonna unplug everything and give a final thought on this battery and see if it's worth your money. Okay, so that's going to conclude the testing on this battery. Again, there's no low temp charging shutoff feature built into this, so I didn't get to go put it in my freezer and see if it worked. But, you know, again, 21 cents a watt hour. Now, low temp cutoff protection isn't that important. If you're someone like me who lives in Texas, who very rarely ever sees anything below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that might not be a big deal for you. If you are up north, or if you're RVing across the country and you're gonna go into some cold climates, it might be a little more important for you to have low temp cutoff feature built into a battery. Um, but again, this one does not. There's ways around it. Some of these charge controllers have a temperature sensor you can use to shut the battery down from charging, but um, this does not have it. So that's kind of the only knock that I see on this battery. But again, 269 bucks, you're not gonna get everything that you want for that price. But 104 amp hours I was able to squeeze out of this thing and I think I could have gotten a few more amp hours if my inverter did not hit low voltage disconnect. So I'm gonna stick with 104 amp hours which is over its rated capacity and the fact that I continuously pulled around 112 to 114 amps for over 10 minutes on this battery is very good. It's rated at 100 amps max continuous discharge. So it kind of went above and beyond its rated capacity. So that did well in and of itself. If you're gonna be putting a big load on this battery, you're not gonna get a huge surge capacity off of this battery like some other batteries that I've tested that have a 250 amp surge capacity for a brief period of time. But, but I think 170 amps for a few seconds is more than adequate for a 12.8 volt system. But for 21 cents a watt hour, I think it worked pretty well. Now, if they bump this thing up to 319 bucks again, do not buy it because there's way too many better options out there for you below 320 bucks. But if you can find this thing for around 269 bucks like it is right now, I think it's a pretty good option if you are not concerned about having low temp charging protection. So, gang, that's it for the Bunflow 12.8 volt battery. Uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.